Uh, good evening, everyone. This is Shannon Rutherford, the town planner for Farmington. This is the town plan and zoning commission meeting, and I will do roll call of our members. Patrick Carrier. Here. Mike Grabulis. Here. Scott Halstead. Here. Matt H Wagner. Here. Liz Sanford. Here. Ina St. James. Here. Uh, Matthew Bandel. Here. And I will note for the record that James Ratcliffe is absent this evening. Sounds good. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Ines St. James. Welcome to Town of Farmington Plan and Zoning Meeting. Hmm, that was interesting. <laughs> Today is Monday, uh, June 26. Uh, thank you for joining us in person and online. Um, the first item uh, is for Scott, our secretary, to read the legal notice, please. Absolutely. Notice is hereby given that the Town Plan and Zoning Commission will hold a hybrid in person and online. Public hearing on Monday, June 26, 2023 at 7 o'clock p.m. in the Town Hall Council Chambers on the following applications. John Dawson, application for special permit for expansion of home in excess of 1,600 square feet, finished living area and 2,200 square feet total area, and construction of accessory structure in excess of 550 square feet located at 94 Perry Street, R9 zone. Ms. Porter School, application for special permit for daycare use at 49 Main Street, aka 9 Mountain Road, R20 zone. Interested parties are encouraged to participate in this hybrid public hearing. Participation in person is at 1 Monteith Drive, Town Hall, Town Council Chambers, or online participation is via the link to the meeting on the Town of Farmington's website at the address on the screen. A copy of this proposal is online also at the address on the screen or by calling the planning department at Farmington Town Hall at 860-675-2325. Dated at Farmington, Connecticut, this 8th day of June, 2023, Town Plan and Zoning Commission, Inez St. James Chair. Thank you, Scott. All right. Uh, we are going to run through several new business items and then we'll open up uh, to the public hearing portion uh, where we get to hear from the applicant. We get to ask questions and open up to you, um, the public, if you have any questions, concerns, or comments about any of these applications. All right, so the first item in front of us is um, an application from Town of Farmington to extend the moratorium on new multifamily residential developments in all zones through October 1st, 2023. So, Shannon, uh, at this point, the moratorium is set to expire when? Uh, currently, the moratorium is set to expire on July 20th, okay. um, 2023. The commission first heard this on January 9th uh, and voted unanimously to approve the moratorium for six months with an option to extend an additional six months. Um, an extension to October 1st would be an additional two and a half months. Uh, the thought being is um, in November, we have elections, so this would lift the moratorium one month prior to uh, the election when the, um, I'll say the campaign season is really in earnest at that point. So it would give, uh, it also gives staff and the commission an additional two and a half months to uh, do some of the further research and investigation and determination as to what amendments, if any, are to be made to the zoning regulations? Okay, thank you um, for the summary. So commissioners, questions, concerns, how do you feel about the extension? I know we have some meetings scheduled, um, four meetings, right, specifically, to talk about um, the moratorium and these topics. Do you think it's a good idea? How about we'll start with Matthew? I think the work sessions are... Uh, definitely the the vital part we were missing. So I think extension is is you know absolutely vital to keep this going, so we can do those work sessions and uh, make an informed decision. Okay, thank you. How about you, Matt? Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I think this is a really important issue for our state, and I think the state of Connecticut, I think, is leaving it up to towns to really do a lot of the nuts and bolts. So I really commend the town staff and my fellow commissioners on wanting to endeavor into this really important issue to better understand it and try to figure out what makes the best sense for Farmington. So extending this window and giving us more time to really understand this issue, I think is important. So that makes sense to me. 
Thank you. Thank you. Um, Liz, I don't want to miss you online. What are your hey. thoughts on it? Uh, thank you, Inez. Yeah, um, I, I agree with what's already been said. This is vitally important work. We need to get it done. And our schedule has just been so full this spring that we haven't been able to give the dedicated time we need to this very important subject. So I am strongly in favor of uh, continuing this moratorium until October 1st. Okay, thank you. Scott, how about you? Yeah, I, I agree with my fellow commissioners. I think in particular, the three months makes sense given not only sort of the urgency of the matter, but also the timing related to elections. So um, I'm fully in favor of this. And Patrick? I agree with okay. all the commissioners, yeah. And agree. Like, good. Okay. <laughs> all right. Thank you. And uh, thank you in advance, uh, everyone, because uh, we are adding additional meetings to our schedule. Hopefully, we'll be a little bit more focused, right? We won't be interrupted and have a lot of things to talk about. But uh, thank you in advance for that. And I do think it's very important that we tackle it. Uh, we're not rerun rewriting, you know, zoning regulations for our town. But if we can look at some of this, um, and make smart decisions. I think this is the way to go. So we need a motion and a second to approve the extension. Um, I'd like to make a motion to approve the application by the town of Farmington to extend the moratorium on new multifamily residential developments in all zones through October 1st, 2023. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. So it's unanimous. Thank you. So the next one is um, same thing, right? Just different, um, same idea, right? We're extending it. Um, Shannon, do we just need a separate vote? Sure, okay. correct. So this is just to be clear for the record, it's sure. an application to expend the, extend the moratorium for new single family residential developments with three or more dwelling units or lots in all zones except the uh, AHHOD and SROZ uh, zones, uh, again, it would be through October 1st of 2023, okay. uh, for same reasons, right. right? So this one was also scheduled to expire on July 20th. It would be an extension of two and a half months to bring us to October 1st. Um, and it will be part of the same, uh, work sessions that, uh, one of the commission members mentioned. Yes. Makes sense. All right. So, um, without further ado, uh, we had a motion and a second, please. Yeah, I make the motion to ex, uh, to approve the application by the town of Farmington to extend the moratorium on new single family residential developments within three or more dwelling units or lots in all zones except the AHHOD and the SROZ. Okay, second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. So it's unanimous. Thank you. All right, uh, moving right along. Do I feel like I'm shouting or we're okay? No, we're okay. Good. All right, fine. Thank you. Now I will start probably. <laughs> All right. Uh, next item is an application uh, that we are accepting this evening from Metro Realty Management Corporation. Um, we need a motion and a second. And if you can, whoever does it, if you can read it in its entirety, please. Yep. Um, I'd like to make a motion to accept the application by Metro Realty Management Corporation to amend the POCD and amend the MORF zoning regulation and schedule a public hearing with a recommended hearing date of July 31st, 2023. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, again, unanimous, thank you. Moving right along, uh, at another application from Metro Realty Management. Corp, we need a motion and a second, please. I'd like uh, to make a motion to accept the application by Metro Realty Management Corporation for 111 South Road. Uh, I don't know if I said that right, but <laughs> for change of zone from PR to MORF and schedule a public hearing with a recommended hearing date of July 31st, 2023. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Again, unanimous. Thank you. Well, moving right along, Patrick. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So our next one is uh, Farmington Land Trust. Uh, yeah, I'd like to make a motion to accept the application to install stone parking area 
um, with Cape Cod curbing at the edge of Mountain Spring Road. And actually, this is uh, an application by Farmington Land Trust at lot 9528 Mountain Spring Road. Um, and I'd like to schedule a, a with a recommended uh, hearing date, a public hearing date of July 17, 2023. Yep, you did it. Thank you. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Excellent. Unanimous again. <clears throat> All right. Next one is an application from Town of Farmington. And we need a motion in a second. I'd like to make a motion to accept the application by the Town of Farmington for zoning text amendment to modify Article 2, Section 14.C.5. Dash industrial zone impervious coverage and schedule a public hearing date with, with a recommended hearing date of July 17, 2023. Thank you. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you. And the last new business item, another town of Farmington. Uh, yeah, I'd like to make a motion to accept the application uh, to, to expand use of lights at 10 Monteith Drive by the, by the town of Farmington at Turf Field for High School Community and Recreation Uses PA System limited to games and schedule a public hearing with a recommended hearing date of July 17, 2023. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Excellent. Unanimous. Thank you. That was good. I will not say anything about the time. That was good. <laughs> Thank you. All right. On to public hearing. So we have uh, the first item is a continuation and it looks like it's getting continued. It's an application from Calco Construction. Um, Shannon, at some point, will we need an extension or? Uh, they have granted an extension. I needed an extension to get us to July 17th and they've done so. so okay. That's and that's? We're well within because there's okay. 65 days we're total still, okay. of extension time that they have allotted to them. We're well within. Perfect. We're not even close. So that's what I was um, getting at. Okay. So between the July 17th and the 31st meetings, okay. if we don't finish then, then we'll have other conversations. But I, I anticipate having plan sets here shortly. So. Do we need to make a motion? Please. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And I apologize for folks that are here for this specific item as it is being continued. Um, so commissioners, we need a motion and second to allow for the extension. I'd like to make a motion to continue the public hearing for the application by Calco Construction for a six lot subdivision at 222 Tilkett Notch Road with waiver R80 zone um, to the July 17, 2023. Thank you. And second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, unanimous. Thank you. All right. Uh, the next uh, item in front of us is an application from John Dawson for special permit for expansion of home in excess of 1,600 square feet, finished living area, and 2,200 square feet total area, and construction of accessory structure in excess of 550 square feet located at 94 Perry Street. That's Unionville, right? Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. R9 zone. And who do we have this evening? Uh, I believe we have both Dawson's. Yep. If you come right up to the podium, please. Yes. And yep. Thank you. State your name and address. Thank you. Hi, Max Dawson. Uh, John Dawson. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. All right, so um, you're here um, with a special request for an expansion of a home in Unionville. Yeah, go ahead, tell us about it, please. So um, this has been a family home since the 40s. Uh, we um, have lived there. And uh, in a couple of years ago, we experienced a fire, caught on fire. And so right now we're starting to renovate it. We're hopefully starting to renovate it. And because of the Narrowness is, you know, it's an old 1870s Unionville farmhouse. So it's sort of narrow for family. So we decided to bump it out a little and make it larger. Add a garage. Okay. And um, yeah, that's pretty much our, our thing. We plan on living there. So it's and one family, it's, it's single family today? Yes, ma'am. Okay. For some reason, I thought it's um, more originally, than one. Originally, it was a two family. It was oh. a single family. Then it became a two family. And then we brought it back to a one family. And okay. then it was... 
got a little fire. Got it. I, I drove by and we'll open it up to everyone, uh, but you have some sheds. Will you be removing the sheds? Yeah, there's uh, um, like a old, it was, I think it started out as a chicken coop and then it was added on and, you know, it's pretty typical for Unionville. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's going to come down and we're going to put up a, uh, uh, like a larger shed. I, I paint, I'm an artist and that's where I was planning on doing the paintings. Okay. And just to clarify, we're going to keep the shed uh, under 550 square feet. So that's not going to be in, in excess of that. We're going to keep it within the uh, the limit there. Okay. You're pulling it up for us. There was, I'm going to pull up yeah. the aerial for you. Uh, so yes. Yeah, so um, as um, Mr. Dawson indicated, there was a change um, this afternoon with respect to the shed itself. So it will be, um, it no longer needs a special permit. It'll stay uh, below the maximum. <clears throat> okay allowable area. So we're yeah, here yeah. Union School. Okay, we just want to see you. Church parking lot. Yep. Ooh. Okay, so if I zoom out a little bit, you can see here's St. Mary's Church and the parking lot, Maple Village. Yep. Okay. Union School on the lower right. So it's just, it's up the street, both from Union School and uh, in St. Mary's. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, before I turn it over to commissioners, uh, do you want to add anything? Um, we love Unionville. We're very excited to be expanding our home there. And, uh, you know, we, we just want to make it great looking and uh, bring it up to date. So we're, that's what we're here for. Yeah, we we know with the uh, the recent you know fire, well, at this point is uh, over two and a half years ago. So we're excited to um, you know re start the rebuilding process, uh, kind of rejuvenate the area because I know it's you know kind of been that eyesore for so long. But um, yeah, just excited to build it and um, you know live there uh, together with my father. Okay, great. Thanks for coming in front of us. Um, I'm going to turn it over to commissioners for questions. And um, Mike, we'll start with you. Um, it's a lot of living area. I'm a big guy for the uh, <laughs> for the uh, houses in the area, but um, so it's my understanding that most of the houses in the area um, are multifamily. Uh, I think that it would be a less of an impact with a single family. So yeah. Any questions? Okay, thank you, Patrick. So the the picture the, is that metal roofing is that? I think we're going to stay with the asphalt. Um, the the roof on the house uh, was restored, well replaced, like three years ago, and then the fire occurred. It didn't affect the roof, so I, I the architect drew up the metal roof, and uh, I think we're going to stay with the asphalt. Okay. Yeah. And then what type of siding are you putting? Is it a vinyl or is it a wood? Or We're looking right now at like vinyl siding, mm -hmm. uh, either that or a composite siding. Yeah, I think we're going to go with the vinyl. Yeah. Yeah. Costing, I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to get away from the vinyl. Right. right. All right. Um, and then what, so what is the exact width? I think I was looking, it's like 62. What What was it? What was the original footprint? I'm just trying to get a feeling for the size because I, sure, when sure. I see the number, that's the first thing that sticks out. And I did drive through there today. Mm -hmm. right. You're so, right that some of the duplexes are bigger. Yeah. So the width, it was, the only thing we're adding on is the garage to the width. Mm -hmm. uh, most of it's behind most of the space. So people really can't see it. I've got fairly high hedges in front. Uh, there's the power company right away in the back. And uh, the two the two neighbors on either side uh, are all for this, uh, both the Sansone and uh, Capora. Okay, and then have you gotten have you been able to talk to even any other neighbors? I mean, I'm assuming. Oh yeah, yeah, I talked to all my neighbors. Yeah, it's uh, Jimmy Grimes across the street, uh, the lady that's got the three family, which is really a four family, but whatever. Uh, yeah, just up and down. Uh, I've had a lot of positive feedback. Everybody's you need us to come, and uh, so. Yeah, no, it's 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 a um, a good thing for everybody and everybody that seems to like it. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. That's, that's it for me. Thank you. How about you, Scott? Yeah. Just, so, just to clarify, this is a complete rebuild. Well, the or... interior... oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. No, uh, it's not a complete rebuild. The frame is still there. Okay. Um, they because the house had asbestos. 
They uh, gutted everything down to the studs, it, ceilings gone, everything. Uh, there is some floorboards remaining, but apart from that, it's all new plumbing, all new heating. Um, yeah, all electrical. So it is a complete rebuild interior. Okay. Yeah, and the exterior will be the siding, will also be new. And, and so again, most of the, the added square footage you said is to the back, except yes. for the garage, which is gonna be? Two car. To the, okay. Right, yeah, to the right. There's actually a, a, a curb cut and a place to park there now. So it's it's not really going to be that new of a thing to have a car there or a garage. Actually, it'll look a lot cleaner, I think. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm all set. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Hey, Liz, how about you? Uh, well, yeah. you just asked one of my questions was uh, curb cut and the size of the garage. Um, I, I agree with uh, Commissioner Grubulis. It does look big and it sounds big. Um, I am out of town, so I was unable to drive by and get an actual visual. So, uh, um, uh, and I, I, I think all my questions have been answered. Uh, I'm just looking quick. Yeah, I, I think that's it. It just it appears big for the lot, but that's just from my my perspective of uh, looking at the renderings. So, so thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Were you going to add something? Well, I was going to say, you know, we are very sensitive to the way the house looks on the lot. Um, I, I'll mention one of our neighbors, not by name, but they did put up a very, very large structure in the rear of the lot. And it, it kind of doesn't balance out as well. But ours, I feel, is very um, aesthetically pleasing and it's hidden from view. Okay, thank you. And uh, Matt, how about you? So just to confirm, most of this is in the back. Mm -hmm. of the current. Is, mm -hmm. that, is that correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. The only thing that you'll see different from the front will be the two-car garage, mm -hmm. which I think is an actual natural extension from the house itself. It, it's going to look, I think, very balanced and uh, good. Great. Thank you. I'm yes. set. And Matthew. Um, just actually something uh, for Shannon. Um, you mentioned that by them reducing the shed, this doesn't even require a special permit? It doesn't require a special permit for the shed. Oh, okay. So for the house, for the expanded, so there were two special permits that were noticed, the expanded home and the shed, because the shed had been over 550. Okay. Now with the reduction of the shed, it's just a one special permit. Okay, understood. So we're looking at the elevation here. Yes. The existing house is essentially the, the three windows and a little vestibule. Right, correct. Okay. Yep. And you're adding just on the, the garage. So just the garage right there. So I'll use the shadow here. <laughs> That's all new. That works. That's new. That works. Yeah. That's perfect. There's a reason I have this. <laughs> no, <not> perfect. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Uh, so Shannon, is it one family according to town? Or I think we had had it on record as a two family. Um, but not, I personally wasn't familiar with the situation with respect to the fire. I'm assuming it, if I dug deeper, it would have come up. Um, so I think we'd had it on record as a two. So if I may, uh, it was 91 and 92. So there was, it was, as I said, it started out originally as a single family when it was built in 1870 around uh, in, eight, in 1958, we, my family turned it into a two family as a family residence. So my grandmother was upstairs and we, me, my brothers and parents were downstairs. Um, but it was, the rooms were always small and cramped. So that's uh, that's the history of the house. And yeah, it was two, now started out as one, then it went to two, now it's back to one. Okay, so it's one staying as one. So that's fine. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't have anything new, but my comment uh, for the area, I, I also live in town. I walk by, I drive by. I think it's I think it's too big for that area. Is there any way to make it smaller? Have I you mean, explored it? I, I there's always ways to make things smaller. I, I I don't I personally don't feel that it's too big. It has space in the back, but not in the front. Um, so uh, yeah, I guess you could make it smaller. Of course you yeah. could. Yeah. But I, I don't think from the road. I think it's going to look really good from the road because now. There's there's no garage. There's the old you know broken down thing in the back. There's two curb cuts. Um, I, I I think we'll utilize that one curb cut. 
so there's no more gravel and yeah it's gonna look sharp yeah yeah and you know at the end of the day it will be wonderful right to go back home absolutely especially since it's been in, in your family but uh yeah my overall sense is it's a little too big for the area but uh this is a public hearing so let's uh turn this over to members of the public that are here online and let's get some questions um, or comments if anyone wishes to speak regarding this application come on up anyone here no, we're good. How about online, Shannon? Okay, I'll check online. If anyone has called in online to offer comment regarding this application, please raise your hand using the feature in Zoom, and you'll be acknowledged to address the commission. So again, if anyone has called in, there had been a hand raised, so I'm just saying, if anyone's called in to offer comment on the application at 94 Perry Street, Please raise your hand using the feature in Zoom and you'll be called on to address your comments to the commission. I've got a hand raised, Madam Chair. Okay. Uh, Lewis Williams, you should be able to unmute your microphone. Please provide your name and address to the commission. Yeah, uh, Lewis Williams. Um, I live at 84 Knollwood Road in Farmington. Uh, I own the duplex at 76 A and B Perry Street, a couple of houses away from the uh, property in question. The only thing I would, uh, I'm just going to suggest or request is uh, on either, on, um, I was thinking of maybe just a privacy fence on the sidelines. That's the only comment I had. Outside of that, it looks okay to me. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, if anyone else has called in to offer comment regarding the application for 94 Perry Street, please raise your hand and you'll be acknowledged to address the commission. Madam Chair, there are no other hands raised. All right, thank you. Uh, in this room, anyone else wishes to speak regarding this application? We're good? Okay. Before we close the uh, public hearing, commissioners, last minute questions for the applicant? Go ahead. Yeah, so going back to that, well, actually, Shannon, now that you're on this screen, that duplex that was a little further up, what was the length of that? Like, is there a way to, I think it was to the, yeah, to the top of the screen, I believe. Top of the screen? Yeah. That's like Sands Homes property. So that is the, the threeplex, right? Is that three? Uh, that's the duplex. The, that, that, right, one, oh, that, that one. Oh, there, across yeah. the street? Diagonally. Um, I don't know how deep the lot is on that. Yeah, no, not how deep the lot is. How wide is the house? Uh, so, okay, hang on, pa Patrick, you're referring to the property at, at 111? Yeah, the one with the cursor, yep. Okay. Calvin's? No, that's not Calvin's, that's next door to Calvin's. No, that's next door to Jimmy. Gotcha. Yeah. So the building width, it's 57 by 26. Okay, so it's five, so it's five feet shorter. And then if you go back to the, uh, the front elevation of, of your home, what, how far back is the garage set? It's, I believe it's, no, it's not in plain. Um, well, the shed would be to the left. Yeah, no, I'm That's talking about the, the thing. Are you yeah. saying how far the garage is going back? Yeah, okay. So, so yeah, it should be that top right. Uh, that bottom, uh, yeah, I don't have the. I mean, you don't have it exact, no. but that's that's the front, right? So that so it kind of it jogs. It steps back, mm -hmm. right. so it's not going to be like one. Because when you look no. at the rendering, you kind of see like a flat sixty-two foot wall. Yeah, right. but I just want to make you know yeah, I'm no, observing I'm that as I'm seeing it, right? And it's so we, just to put that in perspective, I'm I'm just kind of saw that. And, thank you. Yeah, we've we've tried to make it interesting. You know, we don't want it just a box on the street. There's right. several boxes on the street, and I think they look terrible. But um, if we we're trying to restore the classic look, um, there you go. and I, you know, there you go. There's the classic look. Yeah. Uh, we're just going to add a little, you know, the two car garage on the right side of that. And I think that's what people will see. Uh, the privacy fencing idea from the gentleman in uh, Farmington, I think is a really great idea. We've already kind of considered that and, you know, because it's just, it'll give it a little more um, finish. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, no, that's it. I just wanted to bring that up because, sure you know, again, when I was first looking at it, I'm thinking 62 feet wide and you look at the square footage and it's scary, right? But in right. reality, you know, 
what the square footage is doesn't really matter as long as it fits and sometimes you know fitting is kind of aesthetically right mm -hmm. so the way this is positioned it, it does jog back so when you're driving up it won't appear giant egg is that fair yeah, to say? yeah. It, I, I think that it's going to really not look that much different than what it does now from the street mm -hmm. uh there will be to the back we're losing some backyard uh we've got the right of way behind us which is all very wooded um well w shrubby you know right. weedy shrubby for mm -hmm. the power lines uh, so it's it's pretty cool. I mean, it's a great lot. Okay, that's it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Anyone else? I just one question: Are you maintaining both curb cuts? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, just because we have them, so I'd like to keep them. Uh, you know, the shed in the back. I mean, we want to put you know a lawn tractor back there or a motorcycle or something. I think it'd be good to be able to not have to drive over the grass to get mm -hmm. there. Fair enough. Thank you. We're good. Okay. Mm -hmm. And. Um, uh, Oh, one question, Inez. Yes. Um, about the shed. Now, is it, uh, it will stay the size, it's going to be under the 550, correct? You said, you said that's changed. Um, will it sit in primarily the same footprint? Primarily, With all yeah. the setbacks and everything? It's okay. It's okay. Yes, it will. It will. Um, so I can see Maybe get closer oh, to the microwave. Oh, yeah. I mean, microwave. Uh, my desk. Yes, the <laughs> shed will remain in the uh, primarily the same footprint. The shed right now is grandfathered in uh, three feet away from the um, property line, so we'd have to move it over to uh, meet the current zoning regulations. But in general, it will be about the same. Well, that particular drawing shows a larger uh, space. We've cut it down so that it would be five fifty. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. So if I may, just so the commission understands with respect to the shed, it still will have staff review. It just doesn't require a special permit and anything over 200 square feet requires a building permit. So it will go through an official review process for height, setbacks, et cetera. Perfect. It'll be reviewed. Perfect. Um, and then I, Madam Chair, just if we could have the applicant kind of touched on it, but with respect to the request for the fence i'd like if the commission thinks they might want to incorporate that i'd like the applicant to be clear on that because the, the property shows that there is some fence yeah we, we've like always understand. had uh, so sorry no you're good no go okay. right ahead yeah it's okay okay we've always had a uh uh originally there were uh hemlocks along that property line there and then they sort of overgrew and we had to take them down. There was a small low fence. We're looking at more of a, you know, typical, you know, stockade or vinyl fence to go from uh, not right to the edge to, of the road because you can't see when you're pulling out, mm -hmm. but, you know, to kind of follow to the back. I talked to my neighbor. He's interested in like splitting the cost. So that's pretty cool. And on the other side, um, we would put a fence in, but we might have to have um, some sort of, I don't know how, how to figure it out. I guess you could do it. Yeah. I was thinking about the snow. When you go to plow the snow, where does it go? So, but we could just uh, put it with the new nine foot setback. It would just end up there. So fences all around. Okay. So Except the back. Okay. But privacy fence on each side. And you're okay to, as, as part of our motion? Yes. We're okay, doing a fence on each side. Yes. Okay. Yes. Sides. Okay. Mm -hmm. And working with staff, right, Shannon? Correct. Because yep. there is some zoning nuances about the height. Um, it has to be okay. shorter at the front, and then it can go taller once you're beyond the front setback. So yep. it would just have to be zoning compliant. You're good. That makes Obviously. sense. Okay. Yeah. Right. All right. Yes, it will definitely be fun. Okay. So thank you for coming in front of us. At this point, there's no one else, right, online. Uh, I can ask one more time. Okay. If anyone's called in regarding the application at 94 Perry Street, please raise your hand to address the commission. Madam Chair, there are no hands raised. All right. So at this point, I would like to close the public hearing. Thank you. And uh, we need a motion. And uh, let's have a discussion. So to be clear, the um, what exactly is the um, condition we're putting? It's a, a fence on, on each side of the property. That is correct. And the applicant will work with town staff. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, I'd like to make a motion um, to approve the application by John Dawson for a special permit for expansion of home in excess of 1,600 square feet 
finished living area and 2,200 square feet of total area with the following condition that um, the applicant will work with town staff um, and install a fence on both sides of the property. Okay. We need a second and then we can talk about it. Second. All right. And you feel free you to sit come. down. Yeah, okay. sorry. I should have said something to you. Thank you. Thank you. you absolutely. All right. Um, I think as presented uh, to me, it's still way too big for this area. Um, but let's talk about it. Mr. Mike. No, really, that was my only comment or concern. Uh, obviously, there's, you know, you have 4,300 square feet of living area when the next closest is 3,000 in the area. But I'm familiar with the property, and I and it, the way it looks, it, it actually looks quite small from the road. It does. So, yep. like Pat said, if it, it can, you know, that living area can fit within, you know, a, a smaller building size. And that was really my only concern. All right. Thank you. Patrick. Yeah. I mean, I pretty much stated everything I said. Again, my first thought was just looking at the square feet. It's like, whoa. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, after, obviously I'm familiar with plans and after looking at it and looking at that elevation and, and, and just looking at the one across the street, you know, the one across the street is probably looking bigger, right? It's not deeper, but mm -hmm. you know, it's just one long wall um, and it's five feet shorter where this one's, again, it's going to step back. And I think that stepping back will get almost give it the illusion that it's smaller because when you're coming up on it, you're just focusing on that front portion. So um, initially I was worried about it. I think it, I think it's fine. Okay. How about you, Scott? You ready to vote or? Yeah, I, I some more thoughts. I appreciate the applicant's efforts to to make it to sort of actually like hide the size. Um, I still got a little sticker shock over the size. It's a lot bigger than you know. We see quite a few of these types of applications, and it's it's quite a bit bigger than what we've seen for that lot size. So I'm still a little stuck on that. But what is giving me pause is the the way that they've laid it out. So that's kind of what I'm thinking through. How about you, Liz? <clears throat> Questions, comments, concerns? Uh, I, I'm going to echo what my um, fellow members are are saying. I, I kind of agree. It's it seems big for a small area for a small lot. Um, I I also agree with Patrick that it it appears while it it will not be the large straight line that the other the building across the street is the, the step back will break it up and it won't be quite as much of a monolith of a building um but that's a lot of space um so it's just it is a little it, it is a i liked your phrase scott that is sticker shock sticker shock so um but that that's my only feeling okay uh matt yeah, no, I'm good to vote. I'm good with the application. I appreciate Patrick you walking us through the the sort of plan and how it sort of sort of I guess jet back jets back from from the road. That's helpful for me. Um, also, just to point out, right? There's really no concerns from the neighbors. This public hearing and the neighborhood didn't show up. We had one landlord who was good good with it, who lived in that area, and appreciate the applicant um, agreeing to the privacy fence. I think that helps just kind of um, make sure we're good here. And again, the the applicant you mentioned sort of positive referrals from the neighborhood, so they provided testimony that again the neighborhood seems seems good with the plants. So I'm good. Thank you. All right, and Matthew, uh, I echo everyone else's concerns about the size. I do think it's executed well, uh, so it hides the size. As Liz said, it's not a monolithic structure; it kind of is uh, broken up. I also think that it's in keeping with the character of uh, some lovely street, Main Street of Unionville, kind of a mix of smaller and larger houses. Uh, so, yeah, I'm good. I'm good to vote. Okay. Um, I have nothing new. Um, I st am still sticking to it. You know, I drove by uh, Burlington Road, which we recently approved also uh, for larger expansion. And uh, the neighbors on each side, they're absolutely dwarfed by the houses being built. Um, but 
that's my opinion. Um, and I do as a single family, I think it's it's too big for this area. Um, but let's vote. Okay. So uh, I guess uh, Shannon will just do one by one. Uh, I'm happy to roll call. Okay. Thank you. Uh, okay. So I'm going to go in alphabetical order. Uh, Patrick Carrier. Uh, yes. Mike Gravulis. Yes. Scott Halstead. No. Matt Hot Wagner. Yes. Uh, Liz Stanford. Yes. And Ina St. James. No. Okay. It passes four two. So you are all set and you'll be uh, hearing from town staff. All right. Thanks for coming in. Yeah. And yep. Good luck with the project. Sure. All right. The next and last item for public hearing is an application from Ms. Porter School for special permit for daycare use at 49 Main Street, also known as 9 Mountain Road, R20 zone. And who do we have? Okay, hi there. Come on up, uh, state your name and address, please. My name is Jackie Murray. I'm here on behalf of Miss Porter's School um, to talk about our Nine Mountain Road property, also known as 49 Main Street. Um, so Miss Porter's School has been operating our historic schoolhouse as a daycare center since 1999 with clear communication with the town of Farmington and the state of Connecticut. Um, it's worth noting that this property was one of the first buildings used by Sarah Porter to educate girls when she started Miss Porter's school in 1843. Um, since 1999, Schoolhouse has served hundreds of children throughout our community. Schoolhouse is open to Miss Porter's school families, affiliate families, and local community members. We are proud to serve children of Noah Wallace teachers and our neighbors. We've never advertised this program and we do not have a website. Rather, our program has remained a vibrant space for children through word of mouth. We're currently seeking daycare licensure through the Connecticut Office of Early Childhood and our application requires a special permit. Since 1999, Miss Porter's School has been operating under our institutional accreditation through the New England Association of Schools and Colleges, known as NEASC, um, but plan to operate under formal licensure with the state of Connecticut once improved in August. And we did submit a full application to the state earlier this month. Um, our program is relatively small. Our building has a max capacity of 30 children. We currently have eight staff members five of whom are full-time and three are part-time, and four of our staff members have been with us for over 15 years, which is pretty remarkable. Um, our director, Liz Kohler, who's here with me tonight, um, has been directing our program for the past 19 years. Um, and Liz has a master's degree in early childhood education and is a dedicated, generous, and effective leader of our schoolhouse program. We're thrilled to have her. Um, schoolhouse is open from 7.30 in the morning to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday, and we are closed during the summer months. So right now we are not open. Um, we are closed approximately from June 15th to August 15th. Um, it's worth noting that additional parking spots are not needed um, with this special permit, and we plan to make no adjustments to our upper parking lot. Um, I do come to you tonight as both the director of campus planning, but also as a new mom. My daughter, Kennedy, was born on Labor Day of this year, ironically, um, and she joined Schoolhouse in November. And I think anyone who's a parent would know that the first day of daycare drop-off is incredibly difficult. But as the days and the weeks went on, it got easier and easier. And much of that is due, in fact, to our staff and Liz. Um, um, the teachers are kind, treat the children as they would their own, and embrace each child's unique personalities to develop a care plan that enables them to thrive. Um, my husband and I are so grateful for Schoolhouse, and when we open in the fall, Kennedy will be the big kid in the infant room, so we're pretty proud of that. Um, but I just want to make it clear that in applying for this special permit with the town, that we plan to make no changes to how we're currently operating. Our upper parking lot, our building exterior, class size, and number of staff are staying exactly the same. Um, for the past two decades, we've been operating under the licensure requirements put out by the state. We have annual fire inspections, a code compliance sprinkler system, six inches of shock absorbing material in our outdoor play area, and additional items that ensure the safety of our children and staff. Um, Schoolhouse has been operating in the village for the past 24 years, and this special permit will enable us to continue to do so. 
So we thank you for considering. Thank you. Um, thank you for the background. Because I was wondering why are we even looking at this, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's that's all good. I'm going to turn it right over to the commissioners. And thanks again, Mike. No questions. All right, Patrick. Um, so yeah, you stated that basically nothing's changing, and you're following all the state guidelines and have been. Correct. Yeah. So it's just a, a like this. This says here, um, you're just coming for the for the formal approval. Correct. This is essentially just a check in the box on our application for the state. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Scott. No questions. All right. How about you, Liz? Questions? Uh, no, no questions. Just a um, a full hearted well done. Uh, it's a great program, and uh, they're great neighbors. Thank you. All right. Matt. No questions. Thank you. And Matthew. No questions. Okay. Same. Um, thank you. All right. This is a public hearing. Um, so is there anyone in this room that wishes to speak regarding this application? Ask questions about it. Yeah, sure. Would you yeah, please you. please yeah, come no. to the podium? Yeah, thank you, Sarah. Back. Yes, thank you. I know. Yeah, come on up, please. State your name and address, please. My name is Ann Mullen. I live at 40 High Street. Um, my property used to abut Miss Porter's school, but they have since sold that piece of property to my neighbor. Uh, my only concern with it is that I overlook a I'll say semi-industrial area behind Miss Porter School. And I'm just very concerned because they have already put forth a plan to all of the neighbors to put in more parking, that this may be a step in the right direction of them being able to put in that parking um, because there's not enough parking for drop-off or, or something like that. Um, I'm very concerned about any additional um, space being given to any parking. There's a lot of parking back there. There's a lot of, um, you know, uh, trucks. I don't know what kind of trucks there are. I know there's six um, buses that the school uses um, and a lot of other, um, you know, uh, sorry, I'm trying to think about what I'm trying to say. Uh, lawn care products and things like that going on back there. So there, it, it's a lot of stuff going on behind all of our houses of the people that abut that piece of property. So I just want to make sure that this isn't going to be a step towards more. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Sh Shannon, mm -hmm. is that on GIS? Is that what we're looking at or no? Or is that the last property? So this is, so this is a aerial that was included in the agenda package and online. Um, I can pull it up on our GIS. So it shows Nine Mountain Road is here at the lower uh, lower corner of the property. Um, so what's behind it? It's all part, it is Porter's property. So that's why it's also listed on the agenda as 47 Main Street, AKA Nine Mountain because of the age of the property and like many of the, uh, the properties in the area, we have multiple buildings on one lot. Awesome. Sorry, I said 47, I meant 49, whichever, 49. Yep. So this is the overall, right? We have one, two, three, four, five, six buildings on the one property. So they all have their own mailing address. So this is the schoolhouse lot in the, the lower corner of the overall property. And this is, um, I believe it's uh, a maintenance shed of sorts, and there is some parking of, of buses, um, but I'm sure uh, Ms. Murphy could, if you've got additional questions, she's probably better to answer that than I am regarding the exact use and how this functions on a regular basis. But it is part of, all of this is part of order. So if I click that property, you see the red highlight? Yep. Right? Yep. That's entire property is Miss Porter's property. Do you have information on it that you can share with us about the parking? I, I know you mentioned there's no change for your portion of it, but. Yep. So I can make it clear to everyone that we are not making any changes to our parking lot. The number of students that we are accepting for next year is the exact same that we've always accepted. Um, our building max is 30. And this year, if you even factor in our wait list, we will be at 28 students. Um, so there's there's simply no need for us to make a change. We are not proposing any changes to our parking right now. 
um, everything would stay exactly as it's function functioning. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you, sorry. Any uh, one else in the room that wishes to come on up, please, thank you. She just followed them. Hi, my name is Scott Mulvihill. I live at 11 Mountain Road, and we are celebrating our 10th year in Farmington. Uh, my daughter Olivia was born on Labor Day as well, so <laughs> share that. Uh, and my son Mason, who is going to be 12, uh, participated in Miss Porter's day school when he was a lot smaller. In January of this year, uh, Jackie and her colleague Rich reached out to myself and my wife because they wanted to talk about parking lot expansion to handle where the buses are parked. You can see my roof. That's about, correct, that's about 20 feet from where those buses are parked. <clears throat> the buses at Miss Porter's run every day when there's school. Uh, sometimes at 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night on a Saturday, um, a lot on Sundays. The maintenance crew, who I've become friendly with, all great guys, they begin their day at about five in the morning. So when Jackie reached out to get my opinion on expanding their parking lot and facilities, um, I was vehement, vehemently opposed, as was my wife and Ann Mullen and several of the other neighbors that are trying to be good neighbors and deal with what has metastasized into basically a landscape company and transportation company. Given the outrage expressed by the neighbors in the immediate area, Michael Bergen, who is the CFO of Miss Porters, reached out to many of us to say that they were going to abandon the parking project. So that was in later part of February, maybe in March. So when we were notified that the school, the schoolhouse, was now interested in some sort of special licensing, um, it seemed all too coincidental that since operating in 1999, there had never been a requirement for the special permitting. I know that when Katie Bradley was running the day school, um, there was basically a handshake deal done with the town of Farmington, but apparently there's been some sort of state mandate or state requirement that now requires that they have a special permit. Listen, it's a great school. Um, I travel for work. When people ask me where I'm from, I say I'm from Farmington, and they say Miss Porter's, <laughs> and I say, yeah, I live right next door to Miss Porter's, and that's Pretty cool. I'm all for keeping the schoolhouse, you know, legal, running, thriving. The little kids that are there are great. When I'm out, my yard is a lot greener than that. I don't know when you took this picture. But <laughs> when my wife and I are out, you know, doing landscaping work as we do, and the kids are there, they all come run into the fence and, you know, hi. And if I'm up on the tractor, that's, well, that's a whole other thing. They just go crazy. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm all for the schoolhouse being the schoolhouse. Um, what I'm emphatically against is somehow this special permit that is all of a sudden materialized, somehow going to be a rubber stamp for them to do what they said they were gonna do back in February. So um, I go back to what Jackie said, that right now we have no plans to make any changes. I'm not here for right now. I don't want any changes. So thanks for your time. Thank you.
I feel like we're talking about two different things here, no? Mm -hmm. There's no site plan change before us. Right. I mean, right. I understand, but I mean, is we're not right. voting on any site plan change. Shannon, can I ask a, a clarification question at this point? Yeah. Yes, go ahead. Of so we're, we're voting on <clears throat> the use of this to 30. If, if they wanted to expand it to 60, would they have to come back to us because the use changes or can they do that without coming to the commission like how much of a use change kind of triggers them having to come back to the commission so as i say a, a use change so that is not a use change right. that's a size change and in order to accommodate 30 additional children there would be a building change and a parking change Got and it. everything else so so can i okay. that's so that's program right so yeah that makes state sense. law you have to have x number of square feet per student and so that's there's the fire building capacity right. and then there's a state right, law right. from an education building capacity so whether i'm not sure which is governing to hit the 30 student threshold but nonetheless that's you're at 30 student threshold got it based on that would, would the applicant be okay with a condition for approval to have the use that you read into the record be the condition right the 30 students and no expansion and no parking expansion uh, Yeah, sure. If you please. Could, yes, thank please. you. So it's getting captured in the recording. Yes. Please, thank you. Our building cannot accommodate more than thirty students. Um, so we we truly have we would never expand. I mean, that would be a whole nother issue. We'd have to add on to the building. Um, so if we need to put that in writing, that is that is fine with us. Um, I also will say again that this special permit is just needed um, for us to follow the law. This didn't just come out of nowhere. We we have to do this. Um, we're being told by the state of Connecticut we need to do, to do this, and we have, again, there's no need for us to expand our parking. Um, we rescinded our application this winter, and we have not brought it up again. There's no plans. Okay. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Okay. Good. All right. Anyone else that's in the room that wishes to speak regarding this application? Okay. How about online? Shannon? Check online. And then, yeah. um, no, Madam fine. Chair, if you'll remind me, we do have written correspondence as well. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, if anyone has called in, uh, wishes to offer comment regarding the Miss Porter's application for daycare use at 9 Mountain Road, please raise your hand and you'll be acknowledged to address the commission. And if anyone has called in via Zoom to offer comment on the Miss Porter's application for special permit for daycare use at Nine Mountain Road, please raise your hand using the feature in Zoom and you'll be acknowledged to address the commission. Madam Chair, there are no hands raised. Okay. And so, the correspondence, is it a lot? Is it something we can read? It? No, no. There's So there's three. I don't know that okay. it's necessary. Again, they were um, included in the commission package and they were posted I online. So we have a June 5th uh, letter of support. It's shown on the screen from Nicole Felciano from 113 Main Street, Farmington. Um, again, it's, it's a letter of support. And we have a letter of support from Michael and Martha Cheshire at 22 Mountain Road as displayed on the screen and entered into the record. And the final is a letter of support from Reverend George Roberts, the pastor at St. James Parish, the uh, abutting property. Uh, to nine mountain uh nine mountain road so again a letter of support thank you uh that was it those were the three um three pieces of correspondence that's it for the record that was received okay so uh like mike gribble has said you know we have an application in front of us it's pretty specific what the use is the size the parking requirements um but then we have some comments of from neighbors is is this something the town would get involved in or like hours of operation or anything or so again so the what's before the commission is the use correct so for the um uh, for the daycare mm -hmm. with respect to 
anything else just we can staff can follow up with okay. miss borders i know they've followed up already with some of the neighbors so but nonetheless we can check in regarding that okay all right uh commissioners do we have any more questions for the applicant i i do the so the getting back to that parking just so i understand it the expansion of the parking was for the daycare no it wasn't yeah come yes. on. sorry yeah sorry you're gonna get your steps in the yeah, just, yeah 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 <laughs> no the expansion of the parking it was a, a multiple reasons we have our music building up there you can see it um it's opposite of the schoolhouse right next to saint james parish um, we have multiple part-time music teachers that come in throughout the day who would use those spots. We also have our maintenance team who parks up there. Um, our facilities leadership team parks up there as well as schoolhouse staff. Um, but we, we have abandoned those plans and we are parking elsewhere. Um, Shannon, so <clears throat> thank you. Yeah. So Shannon, so they if they wanted to do something with their parking lot, we, they would have to come back, right? Correct. Okay. So it so would be a site. So it was, it made it as far as the, um, I, I'm trying to remember because staff had seen the plan and I, it also, because this is a historic district property, mm -hmm. um, I th think we had gotten to the historic district. Yeah, it's a historic district property. Mm -hmm. um, I think there was an application historic district. I'm not, I'm having trouble mm -hmm. remember because it's mm -hmm. February, the exact sequence of events, but nonetheless, um it was withdrawn prior to it even going through historic district so historic district would be a public hearing because all the certificate of appropriateness applications are a public hearing for a parking lot expansion it would be typically would be a site plan review under new business would not necessarily warrant a public hearing that would be at the commission's discretion um, if they chose to then hold a public hearing for uh parking lot expansion okay yeah okay thank you um yeah no i just wanted i was just sure. trying to but grasp at, that at, you know at no point would something of that level mm -hmm. be a staff right. review okay thank you okay you good no. yeah i mean i appreciate the concern uh from the neighbors and you know should they ever want to do a, a site plan change you know the, we can have a discussion then but i can't base my yeah, my special permit approval denial on on parking that isn't even proposed to us. Um, so, yeah. Okay. I was going to say something else. No. Okay. So you're makes sense. Yeah, you're clear it, on what you yeah. will be voting on. Okay. Yep. Liz, do you have any um, uh, comments? I don't want to forget about you online. No, I I think it's straightforward. I agree with Mike. We can't vote vote on what ifs. You know, we have to what's in front of us okay all right so at this point it sounds like we're ready so i'm going to close the public hearing and we need a need a motion second and of course i'll ask you for discussion which we kind of did but go ahead <laughs> all right i'd like to make a motion to approve the application by miss porter school for special permit for daycare use at 49 main street aka nine mountain road in an r20 zone second second all right so we kind of reverse things is it does everyone know what we're voting on yes yeah we're good well, i know i'm sorry I know. i'm <laughs> looking at the alternate that's all right yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm new I'm no good. harm all right not, all right we're good yeah. all right so uh all in favor aye, aye. aye. Opposed? aye. opposed it was unanimous um you are approved thank you and you'll be hearing from town staff And Shannon, it, it, you'll have it on your list too? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. All right, so that's it for public hearings. Um, planners report, a few items. Yes, just give me one sec. Please. Sure. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to make a note. Um, okay, I'm gonna do. Okay, we do have a couple of things under planners report. Mm -hmm. First up is Jordan's 
furniture. Is it close? Is it close? close to being open? I was gonna say it's real close. Oh, I know. Yeah, I know. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> um. So, uh, it uh, they had extensive renovations to do. Um. So my understanding, I've got John Hanley is on the. I'm trying to get. There you go, John. I was going to promote you to panelist. So John, uh, John Hanley is. Oh, there he. I don't know where he's gone. This is Lord and Taylor. There we go. Yeah. Yes. So this is, it's the former Lord and Taylor Spice. So uh, John Hanley is on the phone. If we've got questions for him, he's the um, representative for Jordan's overseeing construction. So there are um, minor, so you can see the facade upgrades are before you on this on the screen. So this is the portion of the of the Lord and Taylor that faces north out into the main parking field. Um, and then this is the portion there. It's an actually cutaway. You, you'd be standing in the garage looking at. So this is the, the garage view looking into um, looking into the two entrances, the first floor and second floor entrance from the garage. This is back on the north entrance. And there's a tenant space off to the uh, to the left. They're contemplating having a, a restaurateur type tenant and they wanted a separate entrance. So in case there's slightly different hours than the furniture store that could be accommodated. Uh, these are some of the, just the uh, construction details. Um, and then we've got a site plan. So as part of the upgrade to the exterior facade on this north side, um, there's new crosswalk going in, there's some new sidewalk going in, there's a new sidewalk coming over to the entrance, the, um, the tenant entrance space. There's, with redoing this entrance vestibule area, they had to rework some of the roof leaders, so there's a roof leader connection into the catch basin. The pavement in the immediate front drive aisle is going to be redone. There's no net change to parking spaces. There's no net change to gross square floor area. There's no net change to the use. I mean, it was retail. It's furniture versus clothing and whatnot, but it's retail. Um, uh, so there's really no, no net change from that standpoint. There are some lights that are going to go in along the sidewalk edge. You know, it's more, more a little bit of both pedestrian um, I'm going to say safety or just orientation, but um, also you know, just decorative as well. The photometrics plan has been included. Again, it's in the center of the mall. There's nothing concerning there. They're uh, upgrading the landscaping along this perimeter. There's some um, short seat walls that'll be created as part of that entrance uh, that the, the plantings will be in and around. And that's pretty much the extent of it. Um, so yeah, you can see they give the the artist rendering of some of the seat walls and some of the, the landscaping. So the, and then we've got the signs. So from a signage, the signage is being replaced like for like the square footage it was interesting. I went way back to the 80s and I was having trouble figuring out the square footage of the sign. And then all of a sudden realized that was before the expansion of the mall. And there was a south face, a south exterior face that's now interior to the mall. Mm -hmm. So the exterior signage counts, but the interior signage we don't look at. So I couldn't figure out where the, there's a, like 120 square feet of signage missing. I couldn't figure it out. I'm like, oh, because it's now inside the mall instead of outside the mall. So um, at any rate, uh, the signage all complies. It's a like for like replacement from an area standpoint. And they have even um, reserved approximately 115 square feet of signage for the tenant. So if the restaurant comes in, there is the ability to add additional sign over that tenant space door uh, for them. We've ch I've checked all the math on the signage and it's fine. So, um, so that's where we stand. 
And uh, I believe Mr. Uh, Henley, you're on the phone. John? Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> when are they opening up? Um, well, that's why I was going to have him answer, but I believe they are scheduled to open on um, early 2024. Yes, there's still extensive extensive right work to be done inside, so it's going to be 2024. I thought they'd be open for the holiday season, but the last I was informed, that's not the case. Thank you for the update. It looks good. Commissioners, do you have any questions, concerns about what you heard? So, no. Again, I'm handling this is all going to uh, yeah. proceed at staff level. No, yep. no official review coming in. That's okay. fine. Yeah. Go for it. Thank That's you. Good. All right. Uh, next up is Trump. So Trump had been before you mm -hmm. a couple months ago yeah. with the expansion for the uh, their middle building, their main building at One Johnson Avenue. Uh, it was roughly a fifty thousand square foot expansion mm -hmm. through the course of construction and doing fine tune review with the uh, utility companies. There's a number of utility reworks that have to take place with electrical, gas, water. And with those, it's requiring a change to the sewer routing. Um, staffs has reviewed all. So the sewer, we've reviewed slopes. We've had CT water involved regarding the water reroute. CT water is actually required. Um, a rework with respect to fire suppression and where that flow is coming from um, and making sure that flow is being maintained to all the other buildings in the area. So that's the genesis of what's in front of you is just utility. So none of it um, from your standpoint is going to be surface or visible, but it is utility uh, work. Um, it is closer to the wetland uh, Bruce here has already reviewed this with the Inland Wetlands Commission, and uh, they had no issue with it proceeding as shown. Um, the other change has to do with some lighting for the building. The expansion area originally had bollard lights all along the sidewalk that runs, I'm going to say plan north. I think this is east actually. So the, the true north is to the right of the, uh, sorry, the left of the page. So this is east um, face up. And all the bollards are being removed and the they realize the existing, the uh, pole lights that are there will provide sufficient light on the sidewalk. And then they have uh, under soffit lights along the building edge uh, for the small sidewalk that runs immediately along the building edge um, for uh, it's primarily emergency egress, but it does allow some staff access from one portion of the building uh, out and around the equipment to the loading area if needed. So this would be soffit lighting. And then uh, this is just the pole, pole mounted lights that are there. And, um, and then the bollards were removed. The soffit lights um, will have a dimmer switch. We've reviewed foot candles, we've reviewed color temperature, et cetera, and there's no negative issues that we can see with respect to that. And the final item is the uh, glass on the north side of the building. You'll recall there's windows and door on the north side of the building. And one of the conditions was to have a shade put on the window so that if they're running a second or third shift or there's emergency lighting in the building overnight that it's not casting a glare out um, to the neighbors or anything to the to the north so what they're proposing instead it's actually kind of neat is an electrochromic glass and basically it has a it's an electronic tint within the window and it darkens they can set the tint and darken it. So it's uh, sage. It's going to be a sage, uh, sage green glass <clears throat> to match. So it'll match the other buildings. It'll be uniform. Um, but these when actually all of the building, all of the windows in this building will have the electrochromic glass. And so the no uh, nominal is clear 
and up to fully tinted is less than 1% light transmission. And as they pointed out with a shade, most shades, you do get some bleed out on the edges. This virtually eliminates that. So, so pretty cool. So that's how they're addressing that condition of approval. So again, unless there's something commission's concerned with, we're having them just move ahead as uh, as shown here. Good. Okay. Everyone had no concerns. So. Okay, good. All right. And the final one is uh, 402 Farmington Avenue. Um, and I apologize, we've been kicking this back and forth. It came in, it was finalized on Friday when I was out of the office. And I know I emailed this at the very end of the day. Um, some of you perhaps have, didn't even get a chance to see it. Um, that hopefully you'll find it straightforward. So it's 402 Farmington Avenue. It has to do with the retaining wall along the perimeter. Um, and I'll say the north. So north is towards the Horson property and west is towards the Zetugin Fitchman property. So it's that retaining wall that was going to be a combination of a blast face rock wall and then a precast modular block wall, um, which is visible. These are uh, most, I think these are all Bruce's notes, but you can see this hatch pattern along this edge is reflective of what would have been the rock face wall. And then there was another shorter retaining wall that comes around the two garages. So it was gonna be a step to like a tiered wall system. What they found when they blasted the rock is it's um, a much more brittle and fractured face than anticipated. And they do not have, like as you drive on the highway and you see the rock rock face wall, right? It's a nice firm. You can all, you can see the drill lines a lot of times, right? Mm -hmm and you got this nice, clean, smooth face, you don't have this. You can go in and, and like yank out a hunk of rock. Um, it just did not leave a clean face, it fractured. Um, so they are having to put in a full retaining wall because they don't have a stable face wall to work with. So we've worked with them and that's, we've got, engineering calculations we have a bunch we've had to have the building official involved um but the uh there's the plan um it's still it doesn't change the limit of work it doesn't change the height um from a look it's going to be the same block wall that's already installed at the other side um so there was one on the downhill side, you'll recall we had a retaining wall on this side of the development prior to the detention basins. It's the same modular block wall base that's going to be installed. And rather than a two-tiered wall, it's going to be one, one full wall. We've worked through them with respect to drainage and stormwater and how that's going to come around. Um, and we've had uh, an updated memo from Tom Daly or statement from Tom Daly about the direction of stormwater and how to accommodate it. This is really, we look at this as a construction change, um, but wanted to inform all of you and so that you're aware. Certainly if you have questions, I'm happy to answer them. But um, again, there's no physical change to the plan other than two, going from two retaining walls to, to one. Same height, same limits. We didn't push back farther from a limit of clearing. The fence is already installed. The plantings that were promised will all get installed. There's room to do that. So all, all other things stay the same. Mike, comments? Patrick, you're good, Scott. Liz, you have any comments? Does it sound okay what Shannon described? Sounds fine. Just a question. What's the top, what's the highest it's going to go? I'm just my one question. Um, the existing, the as originally designed, it went from 402 top elevation to 388 bottom elevation. So 15-ish feet, 15, 16 feet. Okay, thanks. So that's, that doesn't change. That total height doesn't change. I know. Matt? I'm good. Thank you. Matthew? All set. Okay. Any news in general? Nope, that was it. Yeah. So that's, and nothing else, right? Okay. There's nothing, nothing else. So just with that, then we'll give them yep. the go ahead because they want to get the block ordered and whatnot. And they've held off they back okay. and forth with us. On that. Thank you for working on this, Shannon and Bruce. Uh, yes. 
Um, that's it for planner's report. I have a question for you. Certainly. So we received the notice that bridge work is mm -hmm. happening. Mm -hmm. So is this like the finishing of the bridge? Is that it or do we know? I have no idea. Oh, sure. I got the same notice. I, I I'm didn't so excited because it's like, it looks like it's almost done, but. Yeah, I didn't get the opportunity to uh, yeah. chat with Russ this afternoon. I was okay. pulling other things together and a few a few last minute changes for this evening. Okay. Um, you guys have any questions for Shannon about anything good? Okay. All right. Thank you. Go ahead, Shannon. Okay. So the next um, item then is the work session. Mm -hmm. I think it doesn't look good. Yeah, just work session. So um, we have the four dates. So July 10th, 19th, and 24th, and then Wednesday, August 2nd. Um, one per week. So I took the doodle poll. I didn't want to give us more than one a week. So I picked the most popular day for each week. Um, so not surprisingly, it's the Mondays of the weeks we don't have meetings and it's the Wednesdays, Wednesdays of the weeks that we already have a Monday meeting. So, um, so that's where we, we landed with that. Um, we'll see where we are August 2nd and then we can sure. go from there. Um, what time are the sessions? So the sessions will run from six to nine. So we have Zoom has been outlined from six to nine. Okay. The room has been reserved. This so room will hear mm -hmm. in the council chamber six to nine. Um, the loose intent, as we as I discussed last time, and I think put in the doodle poll, was set up for two hours. Mm -hmm. But understand, like. You know, if it's eight fifteen, whatever, we'll finish. But a hard stop at nine o'clock, so we're not burning everybody out. Um, what else? I've gone through. So in the, um, it will be on Zoom. So if you can't get here or you're running late at work or whatever, and you want to take it from, that's fine. So Zoom's an option. So it will be recorded for those that can't attend and want to get caught up. Um, I will do notes. They'll probably be somewhat cryptic, Shannonized notes if we're going to be doing this on a weekly basis, right? It's going to, right? Like, so like that term. it's not going to be uh, very technical. It's not going to be, uh, you know, as, as detailed and polished, but oh, there'll be like a kind of a running working mm -hmm. note um, for this for us. What I did want to just kind of bring back to everyone's forefront so that we hopefully can get everybody on the same playing field coming into July 10th. In the agenda review, um, there's the 2023 residential zoning review. It's a link to the OneDrive mm -hmm. that has all the documents. So in here is the affordable housing plan that was adopted. Um, there's some other legislative information there's the moratorium presentation that had some of the numbers that we had talked about. Um, there's commissioner questions and responses that had come in in February and responses in February and April. So what I did, um, I took the comments, the questions, so the questions written out in full and then the responses in full. So. Hopefully it puts it in context. It's not just answers without having any understanding of what the question was that led into that. Um, and so there was a handful of, uh, of those. There's a supplement in there that's referenced in one of the answers. So it's a reference document from online about what does research tell us about the effectiveness of local action for inclusionary zoning. Um, so that's some questions that had come in. The housing ordinance, you recall we had Nancy Parent in. So there's the um, housing trust fund as well as our housing agencies. So in case you wanted to revisit those, those are at your fingertips in here. Um, inclusionary zoning, there's some samples from Mansfield, Stanford, and Tolland. I'll let you read them. You will see some of them are quite complex. Some are a little less so. There's an inclusionary zoning 
overview that's done by a local planning group. And they talk about, so this is nice because it's relevant to our Connecticut general statutes. Um, there's probably a way to zoom, make this a little bigger here. So this talks and relates to our Connecticut general statutes. Um, it also goes through and gives examples. So they talk about Stanford, um, they talk about Mansfield, Greenwich, Fairfield, New Canaan, and varying levels of detail depending upon the information that was available and Holland. So that kind of provides a nice quick summary of some inclusionary zoning. Um, waiting for our CROGs um, to get a summary back to us on uh, Public Act 2129 and some of the, what our other CROG communities did with respect to the opt-out items, the parking as well as ADU. Um, so I have not, I need to still put in um, Mr. Galvin's memo from the ADU discussion of at the last meeting. Yeah. Um, so that needs to still get populated in here as well. So, and then there's uh, a document referred to light touch development. So some of this was kind of pro-inclusionary zone. The light touch development presentation I don't know, this anti-inclusionary zoning seems a little strong, um, but it goes to discussing perhaps some of the challenges or um, unforeseen consequences of inclusionary zoning. So there's a PowerPoint presentation and a video link from a January 9th presentation that was done um, by the Home Builders Association of Connecticut. Uh, I sat through the presentation. I want to say it was one hour and it felt like being in a speed dating <laughs> seminar. Like he plowed through 60 slides, like nobody's business. He plowed through like 60 <laughs> slides in 45 minutes. I didn't even know that was possible. <laughs> um, so it may be helpful to have, but there's a lot of good information. So again, it's going to take a little time, but it might be helpful because it was one of those I and I still haven't had the chance. I want to go back and listen to the presentation with the slide open so that I can pause the presentation and then look at the slide, read it, and kind of actually absorb it and understand it at a deeper level. And then, okay, replay the, you know, start the video up again. And then, so use it interactively back and forth. Um, I think there's some value to that. I think we need to be careful that we don't put something in place that's so restrictive that we, shut down residential and we, we end up the, the cautionary, the cautionary tale of that or that I took from it is that you don't want something so restrictive that you end up with only high-end housing and affordable housing and we lose everything in the middle, right? So we, sh we shut down, which has happened in some communities that it, it swung, that pendulum swung hard and we ended up, so I want to make sure that we don't do that or try to make sure that we don't do that. So. So there's the things and the homework for all of us. Um, I guess if, if we want a starting point, I would say start obviously with the affordable housing plan, make sure you know everybody's at least kind of conversationally familiar with that, perhaps the commissioner questions, and then we can start on the inclusionary zoning. I know that was something of concern at the last meeting. Start there. And then we can build from there over the course of the meetings. Um, if there's questions along the way, mm -hmm. let me know. I'll do my best to answer them before the meetings, or if not, it'll at least give us a jumping off point for some questions and conversation topics during the work sessions. It seems to me we should really familiarize ourselves. It's been a while, right? Mm -hmm. With everything right. you just mentioned. I know we're all volunteers, it's, it's time, but it will definitely make the sessions more productive, yep. right? So, because we have nothing else going on, um, I know we included, but we definitely want to go through the documents as much as you can get through would be greatly appreciated. I like your starting position. And then as a group, we can decide 
Yeah. So that's something like understanding, all right, we got to do this in chunks and I don't want you know, like half the group starting in one spot and the other right. half. So I would say like, take a look at the affordable housing plan, take a look at commissioner questions and responses and take a look at inclusionary zoning. Yep. And then we can go from there. We can then move to light touch development and I'll get the info populated on the ADUs and um, even start to pull some sample regulations um, from other communities and ADUs. Does that work? Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Everyone is on board. Liz, you're on board with what Shannon described? Yeah, I, I think that's a good plan. And I, I'm sorry, I missed, you've sent us the SharePoint point link, correct, in the past? Yeah, and so that's what I, um, it is in the agenda review. So that's where I pulled it from. So at the bottom of the agenda review, so the PDF document that I send you uh, with the agenda and agenda, mm -hmm. not the agenda, but the agenda review, no, review. the bottom right. work session, there's a blue link in the right. PDF. So when you click that, it automatically okay. puts you to the OneDrive. Super. I just couldn't remember where it was. Sorry. Nope. So that's <laughs> it. It's you can grab any agenda review and it's the same link. And I've just been adding information to it as we go. So any of the agenda reviews you can grab. Just one yeah, quick. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Just, Thank just you. quick, Shannon. Thank you so much for, for doing this. It's really helpful to organize to find the info easily. Um, you mentioned CRAG. I was reading the news about housing legislation. It didn't seem like anything materially changed that would affect us, but I wasn't sure if you heard of any details that spilled out from from you know the the ledger the, the session ending or anything like that. Uh, I haven't okay. heard, and I haven't normally. It'll populate in the listserv, but I can reach out to Kyle and Caitlin and just double check. Uh, yeah, again, just based on news articles you re read, I'm, I'm sure yeah. fellow yeah. commissioners read those. It didn't seem like anything that material to, that would have affected our, our work here. Correct. Yep. No, and it doesn't hurt to check. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. This was great. And then uh, thank you for uh, Matthew. I know James is in here for participating. Sure. All right. That's it, Shannon? Yeah, uh, yes. I do not have anything else. So unless anyone anything? has any oh, other questions. Jeez. Oh, Are we ready to adjourn this? I know we're going to vote. Well, you got to vote on the minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, yeah. I know. Yeah. Sandy? Yeah, All sure. right. Yeah. One second. I know. All right. We Thank you for the updates. Very productive meeting. <laughs> Um, if we can have a motion and second to approve the minutes from June 12th, that would be great. Uh, yeah, I'd like to make a, mo a motion to approve the minutes of the June 12th, 2023 town plan and zoning commission meeting. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.